On today's RenPy tutorial, we're going to look at playing sounds and music from within the game. And as a quick bonus, we're also going to look at the pause statement, which can be useful for kind of controlling the flow of the game. Um, so right now, I've got a very, very basic scene uh, set up. So um, we're just going to show the bar background. We're going to show our Steven casual neutral character at left. Um, and then the game ends. So just to show you what that looks like real quick, we'll go ahead and play that through. Boom, really quick, automatically ends. All right, so um, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to put in a sound effect um, to play uh, right before our Steven character moves in. So right after we showed the bar, uh, we're gonna play our sound and um, so in order to play a sound, you have to know your file location. It should be in your RenPy file folder, and there's actually an audio folder in there by default. So um, if you have your project selected, and if you go over here to Open Directory and choose Audio, then it will automatically open up your audio directory. And I have a couple of uh, sound files in there already. Um, RimPy uh, can work with several different types of sound files. Uh, they can use uh, MP3s, WAVs, and OGG files are the ones that I mainly use. I think there are another couple that they can use, but pretty much everything that I use or anything that you find should belong to one of those three, uh, one of those three different uh, uh, file formats. So here I have an alarm sound effect in an OGG and OGVORBIS file format. And then I have a song called Hidden Threat that I believe is an MP3. Yes, that is an MP3 file. And so I'll show you how to work with each of those. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to play our alarm sound right before our Steven character moves in. So the way that we're going to do this is with the statement play sound. So we're going to say play sound. And then we're going to put in our, our file name. Now it's going to automatically look in your base folder. Um, however, our sound isn't in the base folder. It's in the audio folder, which is in the base folder. So it's going to look in the base folder first. So we have to start by telling it the audio folder to look into. So audio, and then we're going to say slash, and then our file name, which let me double check that. All right, it's just alarm.ogg. And then the end quote. And that is all you have to do to play a sound. Um, so now uh, it's going to show the bar, it's going to play the sound, and then Steven's going to move in. The game is eventually going to end after that, or it's going to immediately end after that again. So I'm going to go ahead and have him say something just to give us a chance to click off of it. So let's say... Did you hear that sound? There we go, and then when we click away from that, that'll end. So let's be sure to save that, and now we'll play it and see what happens. There we go, so now uh, plays the alarm, uh, Steven moves in, there we go, and then the game ends. Um, so one other thing that's worth mentioning is the game handles sound and music separately. Um, so if you actually go to the preferences menu, you can set the music volume and the sound volume independently of one another. Uh, we also have a voice volume, which I'm not going to be covering in this video. I might do that in a future one. Um, I've actually never done uh, voice acting in any of my games, but I can show you guys how to do that if you're interested. I might, I might actually look into doing a game with that in the future. That would be kind of cool. All right, uh, so now um, if we want to play a song, we do that in much the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start the song playing um, at the very beginning of the scene. So now we're going to say play music, and then we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to put in our audio folder. Uh, let me check that one more time. There we go. Okay, so hidden underscore threat dot mp3. This is going to be our song that we're going to play. All right, so now when we start the game, it's going to start playing our music. Then the bar is going to fade in. It's going to dissolve in. Then it's going to play the alarm. Steven's going to come out and say his line, and then the game ends. So let's play that. There we go. And the music didn't play for some reason. Let me see if I can figure out why that happened. There we go. All right, I got to figure it out. I think it was just because I forgot to save it. So <laughs> now let's try that one more time. Um, so now we've got play music, show the bar, play the sound, show Steven, 
He'll say his line and then the game ends. So yeah, be sure to save it after you make any changes. I, I forget to do that all the time. All right, now let's launch it. There we go. And now we have background music and the sound plays. There we go. All right, so let's end that. Now, let's say that we wanted the uh, music to start while the screen was black and then kind of linger there for a moment. Um, and we can use a pause statement to do that. Again, this one is really simple. We're just going to say pause and then just tell it however long you want it to pause in seconds. So if you want it to pause for three seconds, we're just gonna say 3.0. I don't believe the point zero is necessary. Um, I'm just, I'm in a habit of doing these as a, as a floating point. Um, so you can do like 3.5 or 3.125 or whatever you wanna do, but just for the sake of consistency, if I only wanted to do three seconds, I'll go ahead and put 3.0. Again, I don't think that's 100% necessary, but that's just a habit that I'm in. All right, so now it'll play the music, pause three seconds and then it'll continue uh, going it'll load in the scene let's try that and there we go so now it pauses for three seconds and then everything else goes on as normal um, so now let's try one more thing real quick let's say we want to stop the music um, at the end so after Steven says his line we're gonna have the music stop but we're gonna have it fade out. So to stop the music, we say stop music, and you could just end it right there, and then you'll be done with it. It'll stop the music, and we'll keep going. However, um, I'm going to do a, a fade out. Um, this is one spot that I always get conf uh, that I tend to get confused because the syntax is a little inconsistent. Um, I always want to put this as a screen transition, how like you do scene, BG bar with dissolve. I always want to say with fade out, but you don't do it that way. I get syntax errors all the time because of that. You just say stop music, fade out, and then however long you want it to take to fade out. So let's do another three seconds. Let's say 3.0. And let's also pause for 3.0. Um, or actually, ooh, let's do this. Um, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's just say pause. 3.0 so it'll pause while the music is fading out and then the game will end so let's give that one a try there we go so now it waits until we click away our dialogue and then the music starts to fade out the game pauses while that happens and so on so normally, if you don't have that pause statement there, then it'll just end the game immediately before the music fades all the way out. So whenever I do a fade out, I always like to do a pause statement after that, just so you can get the uh, the full effect of the fade out. And a lot of times I'll have it fade to black. I always put just a plain black uh, background in my uh, in my game files. So like I'll have it slowly fade out to black uh, a lot of times by using the uh, dissolve function with an argument, which uh, we covered in an earlier video, so be sure to check that out if you need a full instructions a full instructions on how to do that. One thing I will mention real quick is that the play sound, you can also use the stop sound. So if you have a sound that goes on for a long time, this one's relatively short, but if you have a longer sound, then you can do a stop sound. You can also do stop sound fade out. All right, there are also a handful of other functions that we can do with our sounds and music. For instance, um, if we uh, wanted to, um, if we wanted to fade our music in, kind of in the same way that we fade it out, we just add a fade in statement after we declare our sound file. So play music, name of your sound file, and then say fade in, and let's do a 3.0. Um, which is the same as our pause statement. And then now if we play that, then our music does a slow fade in. There we go, and it finishes fading in at, uh, by the end of that pause statement. And there are still a few other things that we can do. These, um, I only have the uh, one file dropped on my folders there, so I'm not going to, uh, um, I'm not gonna actually be able to demonstrate working with multiple sound files, but I'll show you how to do these really, really briefly. Um, you can actually pass a list um, into the uh, into the play music uh, function. 
Um, so uh, be sure to check out my video on uh, working with lists if you haven't checked that out yet, and I, I give a full description on lists and working with those. But uh, doing audio files as a list is really easy. So all we have to do is instead of just this one audio file in parentheses, if we do it as a list in brackets, and then you could do something like audio slash, um, and again, I'm just going to put in something random here. Oops, there we go. Uh, Song1.mp3, and then comma audio slash song2.mp3. Of course, these are songs that don't actually exist. I'm just using those as placeholders. But then if you do that, then it will automatically play these songs in sequence. It will play song one, and then as soon as that one finishes, it will play song two. And then after that, you can also declare a fade in and a fade out. So you can say fade out 1.0, and then you don't even have to put a comma or anything after that. Just say fade out, I'm sorry, fade in. 1.0. That way when it gets to the end of that song, it'll do a one second fade out and then it'll do a one second fade in into the next song. So that is a great way to uh, do like a playlist in your game if you don't just want the same song. And then a couple of other things that you can do, you can also use a loop or a no loop clause at the end, which are pretty self-explanatory. If you call loop, then it'll make it where the song will repeat when it gets to the end. If you call no loop, then it'll only play once, and then it will stop. And um, I believe that loop is on by default. I think there's a way that you can change the default in the config file, but if you haven't touched anything, I believe that loop is on by default. So you don't even need that at all, unless you just want it to play one time, then just choose or put the no loop clause at the end of your play music statement. Uh, you can also add a volume clause at the end. Uh, for instance, if we say volume, uh, so after volume, you have to give a floating point variable, or I'm sorry, a floating point number between zero and one. So zero is completely off, and then 1.0 is full volume. So if you only wanted to play something at half volume, then you would say volume space 0 0.5, and that song will only play at half volume. And then one more thing that we'll do is a Q statement. So if we say... music and then put in the name of our file just like we did before we'll say audio slash song 3.mp3 then it will automatically start playing that song as soon as the current song is finished playing uh, on that channel so you can also do any of these functions with the play sound so you can use the Q function with play sound you can pass a list and it will automatically play the next sound when when the first one finishes you can also do volume uh, any of the music functions also work with the sound functions all right, that will about do it for today's video. That is pretty much most of the functions for, uh, or all of the important functions anyway, for music and sound. There are a couple of other ones that are less used. I might cover those in a future video, but I think that will do us just fine for now. So if you got something out of this video, don't forget, hit, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. I've got lots of great things planned, including some other tutorial series, so be sure to check back often, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.